guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs and welcome back to another Team of the Week video. This is the second one of the season, of the Premier Division season. I won't be in First Division because I simply can't see all the games and I don't like picking Team of the Weeks if I don't actually see the players play, to be honest with you. So um, let's get straight into it. Okay, and goal guys have gone for Mark McGinley, Finn Harps. Finn Harps had obviously a fantastic 2-1 win against uh, Dundalk at Oriel Park on Friday night. Uh... McGinley was just solid. I don't think he had to make too many exceptional saves in the match. There wasn't much he could do for the goal, but I just thought he he led by example, to be honest with you, in the Finn Harps goal. And um, I often talk about how good Finn Harps defence is, but um, McGinley is a big part of that in terms of organising the team and uh, keeping defenders on their toes. So, um, you know, I think that's crucial in a goalkeeper and it plays a big part as well. But uh, he did have some saves to make in the game as well. And um, look, McGinley, I was going to say he's one of the top goalkeepers in the league. He is, but I think there's a lot of good goalkeepers in this league. But this week, Mark McGinley is my personal number one. Now, at number two, I've gone with Colm Horgan of Sligo Rovers. I thought he put in a very good performance on, what was a Friday night, wasn't it, guys? You forget, don't you, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? But I thought he put in a very good performance in that match against uh, Waterford. Um, defended well in the game. He attacked well as well. He also dealt with uh, weight for, for Waterford. Uh, did have a good game, but I thought Horgan kind of controlled him at times very well as well. And, um, you know, it was just a good all-round performance defensively and going forward. And it's like I've got good options, don't they? Full back, the likes of Lewis Bank now as well. And it just shows the depth they have in their squad going forward. So uh, this week, Colm Horgan is my right back. Now, guys, the left back, I've actually gone for Ian Birmingham, who came on as a sub in the first half. And funnily enough, Shane Griffin was playing very well for Pats at left back, but unfortunately, he had to go off with an injury, shoulder injury. It looks like he'll be out for possibly a month now, which is a pity. But I have to say, Birmingham came on and did very well, guys. Um, He was on in the first half because of the injury. Um, You know, Pats... A lot of their attacks were down the left, and Birmingham was involved in them. Um, got forward very, very well. Um, doesn't have the legs like he had, like he has done in the past. To be fair, but he was allowed attack in this game. Got some crosses into the box, um, and was a threat. Was involved in the goals as well. So I think I think that's uh, something that Ian be delighted with, and uh, I think he deserves again the team of the week. And Pats will need him in the next few weeks with Shane Griffin injured. Just before, guys, we get into the, the next player, let's see if we can hit 50 likes for this video. It would be greatly appreciated. It just improves the YouTube algorithm. Um, so, centre-back, I've gone for Gary Buckley, also Sligo Rovers. Now, he had one, uh, I suppose you could call it a bit of a, a brain fart in the game, where he tried to head it back to McGinty, but there was a Waterford player there and almost made a mistake. But... He was absolutely faultless up to that point. His passing from the back was on point. Um, you know, and sometimes he goes under the radar a little bit at Sligo, Gary Buckley. And, you know, so far this season, he's kept his place inside. Defended well throughout the game. Uh, very cool customer. Too cool in that situation that I talked about a second ago. But um, his passing from the back is very important because Sligo have some nice midfielders and it's important that they get on the ball. And, um, you know, Gary Buckley is well able to uh, feed them. So, Gary Buckley, centre-back. Now, the other centre-back is Dave Webster. Siddiqui got in last week. Webster in this week. Uh, Webster was unlucky not to get in last week, to be honest. And I've, of I've often said they, they really do come as a pair, if you get me. They really complement each other's game. And it's a real unit. Um, I like them a lot as a pair. And, but um, I've just given Neb Webster the nod this week over Siddiqui. He put in a good shift against uh, Dundalk and, you know, in general, Finn Harps dealt with a lot of things Dundalk could throw at them in certain stages of the game and Webster was kind of central to that. So, um, good news for Harps, I suppose, that first couple of weeks of the season and people are looking at Webster and Siddiqui in, in Team of the Week. So, yeah, they have Webster this week, guys. In the middle of the park, guys, I've gone for Ross Tierney of Bohemians. I thought he put in an exceptional performance for Bohemians at the weekend, particularly, obviously, in that first half where both looked like they were going to run right, to be fair, against Longford. Scored a cracker goal as well, uh, which will certainly help him going forward to try and get into the team because Bowes have an abundance of talent in midfield. And maybe at the moment, actually, 
in a way, Bohemians are struggling because they're not sure what the right combination is. But Tierney put in, as I said, a very good performance against, um, drove forward against Longford and um, showed what he was about. Last season, you know, he was in and out, but he picked up a lot of injuries. So this could be the season for Tierney to push on. And Ross Tierney is in this week's team of team of the week. Now, my second midfielder, I've gone 4 3 3 this week, by the way, guys. I think the first week I went 4 2 2 2. It depends on performances and how players play, etc., etc. But Mark Coyle gets in for me, Finn Harps. Uh, I would say very much generally an unsung hero. Not necessarily guaranteed to start in that Finn Harps midfield, but I thought he put in a really, really good performance against Dundalk. I thought Finn Harps were on top generally in midfield against Dundalk, and that was key in the game as well. You know, you think you've got Chris Shields and Sloggett and players like that in the team. Um, Finn Harps, I thought, did very well in midfield. Mark Coyle was my pick of, of the players that played for Harps in that position. I thought um, he used the ball very well in the game. Um, he harassed and harried Dundalk every time they got on the ball and give them a minute piece and uh, made some interceptions as well. And, um, you know, he done himself no harm going forward because, um, as I said, an unsung hero, but I suppose he's getting sung this week. Mark Coyle. Midfielder number three is Greg Bulger. And this is the second week in a row that have put Greg Bulger in the team. And uh, once again, his energy levels in this game, top notch. Again, I'll say it before, like I said it last week, he had a bad injury to Shamrock Rovers last season, but he's come into this season refreshed. Sometimes an injury can make a player up their hunger levels, let's say, and feel refreshed. And sometimes it can knock them back. But with Greg Bulger, it looks like it's done wonders in a way, you know, in many ways. Maybe his age at 32 helps because you start to realise, oh, my career could end any any second type thing when you get an injury like that. Um, but exceptional display again. We all know how good of a footballer he is, but he's really putting in the hard yards. And I'm impressed mainly with the energy levels and how he's getting around the pitch in the last couple of games as well. So great bulger for me gets in as the third midfielder. Now on the wing, I've kind of I've gone with Connor Davis, who kind of played he kind of played up front, to be honest, for Longford, but I'll stick him out in the wing. He was drifting. Um to come on as a sub, to be honest, and score two goals is um is impressive. And at Daily Man Park, it's very difficult. Bowles have been very solid at the back. Uh, last couple of seasons and don't tend to give much away. But Connor Davis came on and, um, you know, he was impressive and it's going to be pushing for a start the next day. Uh, two goals, what can you say? You come on, you get two goals, your team is 2-0 down. There's not much more you can do there. Took took them very well as well, particularly the first goal where, you know, he felt like actually the shot was gone at one stage, but he kept his composure and found the net. And Connor Davis is a player Young player's been around for a while. It'd be great to see him kick on now at Longford. So well done, Connor Davis, for getting in team of the week. Now, yeah, got a bit of criticism for not putting in Gibson last week, Jordan Gibson last week, but one of the reasons was the formation switch as well, which I went with 4 2 2 2. It just suited in, in the week. But I thought he was, um, I know people say he did well last week, but I thought he was much better this week. I think because he had end product, basically. His energy level is good, always good, work rate very good. But this week against Waterford, I mean, his end product was fantastic. Um, the cross for Romeo Park's goal, great finish. But he skipped around two players, uh, great close control, and managed to pick out Parks, who had drifted uh, cleverly into uh, the space beyond the central defenders, and obviously set up that goal. And then the second goal, I mean, he cuts inside, literally top corner. Some people often say top corner, it's not quite top corner. This left footed strike curl from outside the box um, was top corner. So, you know, he put in an exceptional performance as Waterford and um, made a big difference in the game. So, Jordan Gibson gets in this week. Set of four guys have gone for Adam Foley, second week in a row. He was even better this week, wasn't he? Um, obviously, the first goal hit Harp scored against Dundalk was an error by the goalkeeper, but you still have to pounce in that error. And. Um, if you're not switched on as a striker, you can't take advantage of those situations. And he certainly did take advantage. Second goal, cracking goal. Some nice finishes the last few weeks from Adam Foley, actually. Uh, left footed shot against Bowles, but this one, this time it was his right foot. Uh, beat the offside trap, and I believe he did beat the offside trap, to be honest. Um, you know, show a bit of pace, actually, to get through. And it's often difficult when you're one on one, you've you've a bit of a distance to run. But he waited for the right moment and slotted it past the BB into the 
into the near post essentially and took a coolie. Great for Finn Harps because um you get a striker in this league scoring goals and taking chances like that, guys, it's going to be massive. And it's proven the case for Harps in the first two matches after their exceptional start. So Adam Foley gets in second week in a row, guys. Guys, that's about it for Team of the Week. Please like the video. See if we can hit 50 likes. It'd be fantastic. Subscribe if you're new and hit your bell notification button. If you press that button, it means anything I upload, uh, you'll be notified, guys. So it is handy enough. Uh, check back on the Premier Division uh, review shows, First Division review shows. I've got fan reactions the last few days as well. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff coming up as well. And um, that's about it, really, guys. Let me know in the comments uh, any particular players that maybe I left out that impressed you last week. There was plenty of them, to be fair. So um, that's about it, guys. Have a good day, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching, as usual. Good luck. Bye now.